we're on the way now to do the cover shift for the weekend. 8 to 8.30, it's gonna be busy. Hopefully not, but we're running late as per usual, so we'll get there bang on 8 o'clock, do a ward round, and then see what jobs we have uh, for the rest of the day. And it should be pretty fun. I mean, I don't know about fun. Ooh, puddles. Oh, thank God, they cut the, uh, they cut the hedges, which is nice. Oh, that's good. We're looking after a whole lot of units today. So it's a special surgery cover shift. And we cover about eight different units all over the hospital. And we make sure all the patients are all right. There's quite a few patients that we look after for the whole day. It depends, it depends how many are there to be honest. All right, let's get in the car. Get out of here. A little bit chilly, so popping on the jacket. And let's head. Let's do this. Sunday, Sunday cover shift. Car being annoying as per usual. Oh, we do it. Feared off the side of the road, but we recovered. Um, I actually love these little jackets, you know? They really, they really make me feel cozy, you know? It's like, they got pockets. It feels like a blue, like little weird lab coat thing that, that we walk, rock around in. Um, and they're pretty rare. You can't find them too often around the hospital. So once you get one, just hang on to it and make the most of it because they are amazing, super comfy, and it can get a little chilly in the hospital. So yeah, you don't want to like wear like, you know, your jumper from home. So why not bring like this little lab coat around? I mean, it just makes you look cool, calm and collected. We'll go in. The way the day is structured is that I'll probably do the ward round with my uh, registrar and, and then I'll just see what other teams need help. Uh, there's, there's a lot of units that we look after today. There's urology, vascular surgery. We look after uh, ENT, so ear, nose and throat, neurosurge maxillofacial surgery. I think that's it. Plastic surgery, if they come around. Uh, usually they're at a different hospital. Um, and that's pretty much it, I think. Yeah. And then from the later, from the last part of the shift to the last three hours, we also look after orthopedics, which can be a little bit busy because a lot of their patients are old and uh, comorbid and often quite sick. So that can be a little bit of a dicey part of the shift where some things can potentially go wrong and patients can deteriorate. So make sure I have a coffee just before that. Oh yeah, let's go. But yeah, no, I think it should be overall a pretty good day. I'd rather not be at work on a Sunday if I'm completely honest. Half tempted to call in sick. My colleague, that I was working with on the ward was on call today. So I was sort of half teasing her that I'd call in sick and then she'd have to come in and do the shift instead. But uh, I thought I'd, uh, thought it'd be nice. I'd do my shift that I'm allocated to. Get in, get out, and then we'll go home. Yeah, it, it's kind of fun. Like, uh, like on cover shifts, you get to be a bit more independent. Uh, you get to manage things yourself. It's sort of like as close as you can get to a night shift with, like in terms of independence, you are managing problems yourself, you're solving problems yourself. And if you're not comfortable or you need advice from someone, then you get contact, you get in contact with the senior doctor for that unit, you get in contact with the registrar on call, 
and then they help you out and uh, they give you some advice, they can help you make a decision, um, yeah, whatever you need. And yeah, they'll usually get in contact with you because they want you to do things like go admit a patient for, for X, Y, or Z. Um, they might want you to do certain things for their patients if they're uh, in surgery or, or whatnot. That's sort of the way it goes. Most of the day, essentially the whole day, after the water rounds are done, you are by yourself doing like doing jobs, answering pages, uh, everything like that. So hopefully there's not too many pages. After all the ward jobs are sorted for the day, then I might just go and sort out some paperwork and just wait to be contacted for stuff because yeah. And I need to, uh, I've actually got no food for the day, which is a little bit, it's a little bit upsetting. I left the house in a rush, so we're gonna need to get some food at some stage. No brekkie, no lunch, and no dinner. And I'm already hungry. Oh, just popped on my indicator. But I actually didn't need to go right, to be honest. Um, yeah, and I'm already hungry. It's like 7.30. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna spend a lot of money on food today. Oh well. Oh well. All right, let's get to work. So, as you can see, we've just got back. We've got ourselves a nice little coffee here. Amazing, from the bakery. And then I just had a late night last night, so I thought I'd treat myself to a little almond croissant which I've already started nibbling at. Amazing. It's gonna be a good Sunday. We don't have too much stuff to do at the moment. Um, we just have to do the notes. We've updated the nurse in charge. And I mean, one of the main jobs is gonna be eating this almond croissant, so. One of our patients has just come over from the, um, the other hospitals. So we want all our patients to be here, which is good. And uh, yeah, he's, he's just come over. So that's fine. We'll just give him some antibiotics through the trip. Uh, he's got a bit of an infection and uh, we'll get an ultrasound on him uh, sometime tomorrow because they don't run ultrasound over the weekend unless it's very urgent. If you, the only reason they run ultrasound over the weekend is if they query testicular torsion or if they have ovarian torsion or ovarian accident, like an ovarian cyst rupture. So they're the main like emergencies that you need ultrasound in right now. But this guy doesn't have any of that. So it's okay, it's a non-urgent ultrasound later on uh, tomorrow. And yeah, that's it. So let's write these notes and then um, we'll get cracking with the jobs. And then once all that's sorted, then we can um, go and uh, catch up on some paperwork. Let's do it. I forgot to brush my teeth this morning, which is absolutely disgusting. So I'm going to do that right now. Now we have the round with the uh, vascular surgery team as well, which was a little bit unfortunate. And then there's a couple of scripts that we need to do. That's the nice part of the weekend shift. We finally finished both ward rounds. I didn't really want to have to do both, but um, we did the rounds for urology, and so that's the team I'm on, and then we also had to round with vascular surgery. Yeah, let's, um, let's just churn through the notes, and then we can uh, get through it and get some lunch. Look who I found. I found my friend, Ordelia. Hello. What are you up to? I'm up to... This is a hard working person. Yeah, look <laughs> at this. This doesn't even make any sense. I've been working like a dog and then this is yarn, knitting. Yes. And just what's that, boiling water? Yep. Crazy. Busy life. Busy life. I'm trying to figure out how to grow plants using a hydroponic growing system. <laughs> essentially, I don't know what growing plants, means. essentially growing plants without soil. You use just water. Just water. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, alright. Yeah. Does it work? Well, apparently, your produce is and it saves water. UCR. Temp 38. No. No. No, we're not gonna do. We're just gonna do the same as what we're doing. Maybe increase the coverage of antibiotics. Family farm. So there's an out indoor like shelving kit. Family farm. That is insane. So you can grow shit like this. Where's or it gonna fit? Indoors, I guess, somewhere. So the floor. Because it has its own light. See, these LED lights provide its own light source, so it could be in a completely dark room, like the garage, and it doesn't matter. Does it just slurp power for fun? Well... I feel like it's just going to give me a huge energy bill. Well, it says, using just 21.6 litres of water a week, $6 of electricity a week. Wow. And $6 of wool and nutrients. That's one week, though. Then you go, then you don't have to do like grocery shopping for that thing. Yeah, for all these herbs, like a small bunch of these herbs is three dollars. Yeah. You've already saved half of your electricity bill. Yeah. Yeah. And then there is a sun shelf. Look at the sun shelf. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I've gone yeah. into a dark hole. <laughs> anyway, that's all I've done today. <laughs> so you've done work. You've seen patients. I've seen a patient. Did you round though? No. Why didn't you round? Because the registrar does their own list. We don't, it's similar to GenMed. We don't see yeah. every single acute aged care patient. Yeah. Yeah, only the ones on the review list. So there's a HMO oh. review list. So yours, your shift is the same as like the GenMed shift, where all you're doing is just reviewing people. Yeah. But is there a person who rounds? Like a different person? There's an intern who gets paid exclusively to round from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Yeah. But usually there's only one or two patients, so they leave by 10, 11. One or two patients to round on? Yeah. What? Because that's usually how many admissions there are. Because uh, it's a new, it's only the new admins. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, there you go. I rounded on like, I actually think I rounded on 25 patients today. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was a lot of a lot of ward round notes and then jobs for all those people. So I didn't stop, I didn't stop working until like 1.30. Yeah. yeah. That's a bit hectic. Well, bit for hectic. us as well, because normally during the week we cover acute aged care and ortho geriatrics. Mm. But on the weekend, orthopedics cover the ortho geriatrics. Mm. So our yeah. list gets halved. Yeah. Like, literally. <laughs> there you go. But what time do you on to today? Eight, eight to eight. Do you want to hold my page for a bit? We <laughs> <laughs> deal with all these like, Ian T. Ridge was just like, chase this CTPA to make sure like this person doesn't have like a PD. It's like, okay, sure, 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 sure. We'll do. We'll do, that's all right. Do they have a PE? Don't know, they wanted me to wait for the report. Oh. So I don't think it's too, uh, I don't think it's too urgent. I haven't looked sure at the images. Yeah, yeah, all right. Maybe I might get one of these like little... Yeah, so there's different sizes. Yeah. Um, so it is an initial like investment. Yeah, it costs a grand for the pots. No, for the shelf <laughs> with the light and the pots. It's a special type of pot. So we just came back um, after reviewing that patient. They were actually a little bit uh, sick. They might have a bit of a, a neck swelling that might need to be drained in the operating theater. So this patient needed urgent blood that we just took and sent off straight away to the lab. And then we're just gonna keep them fasted. And if they get worse, they're probably gonna have to end up going to theater for a drainage of this. Uh, either it's an infection or it's like a hematoma or something like that. So yeah, pretty interesting. We'll see what happens if this patient gets worse or not and ends up needing to go to theater. So yeah, but I mean, it's like a good lesson like when you have to escalate, know who to talk to if 
patients get sick and obviously the first port of call is the registrar on call for that specific unit and then if they think anything's really abnormal then they'll update their consultant and that's the person above so the consultant doesn't come in on the weekends at least for surgical specialties um, sometimes the consultant will come in for medical specialties or others and yeah it's mainly just the registrars um, and then if anything's really abnormal or if they need to run something by them or they're not sure about what's going on or what to do then they have to give the call to the consultant but usually the uh, most junior person doesn't speak to two people above where they're supposed to be speaking to they speak to the next person in the chain and then if they either can't get hold of that person or they're directed otherwise then they speak to the most senior person so yeah that's the way it sort of works when you try to escalate and they're usually pretty nice i mean I remember when I was first starting out, I was a little bit apprehensive whenever I had to call or interact with a consultant, but I've done it more this year, which is kind of nice. It's kind of settling. Um, you don't really feel like when you interact with them more, you tend to know that they are just normal people who are doctors who have done the same training as you, and they're not like the really mean, unapproachable people that you imagine that they would be like they'd be grumpy if you call them and they'd want mm, reason toast stuck to the toaster oh, so hot so hot and a little bit bare ha well I don't know if we're gonna get these no, no, I need my fingers. I need my fingers. Well, we'll just have to eat this. Let's go. Honestly, one of the best perks of this junior doctor's land, there is like infinite raisin toast. Since I started working here, I don't think I've, I mean, I don't think I've had raisin toast. Before I started working here, I don't think I had raisin toast since I was like, I don't know, in high school, which is like almost like seven years ago. Cause like, we used to have it when I was like going to school, we'd have like training in the morning for like sport. And then I'd have raisin toast like after, which I'd cooked before. Um, and I'd have like these big like pieces of raisin toast and be so good so so good but now I get to enjoy it all over again you don't need a packed lunch when you got raisin toast I've just been dealing with this sick patient yeah working out if we need to take him to theatre or not if we need to do this or that just like waiting to see how they go I mean, it's kind of interesting, like on the cover shift, as I was saying before, like you learn when you learn your threshold, like what your threshold is and how you need to escalate or if it's, if the patient's well enough to wait, if they need to be treated with X or Y first, or if you just need to escalate to the registrar as soon as possible. And you see when you see more patients and you build up your like clinical library you do get better at when you need to escalate oh my god it's covered in crumbs right now i also found this i mean i don't know if i need another coffee for the day but like these like little coffee sachets amazing might have one of those tomorrow perhaps And yeah, I mean, when in doubt, you can always call the senior doctor on and they won't, they won't be mad at you or whatever if you're worried about the patient. And that's the best thing. Well, it's reached the time where we have to do what? We have to watch TV on, we have to watch Netflix. That's, that's what time it is. All the jobs are done. So we get to 
relax. Even though, even though you've done no work today, Ords, I'll be honest. You've seen like two patients. <laughs> three now. All right. I've seen three. It's almost time to um, make more raisin toast as well, to be honest. Have you done some technical difficulties? So we have got to go do an admission. It's now six something, so we're looking after orthopedics. And then after we admit this person, it's dinner. So, we have an hour left. Can't wait to get home. It's seven o'clock. Look out, look at the weather outside. Look how nice that is. Seven o'clock. Look like seven o'clock. Look at that. How nice is that? Anyways, we should probably hop in the lift. But, uh, got to review a patient. We've just admitted one. We've had, no level two. Um, we have eaten our dinner. It's only got an hour left to go, and then we can get out of here, which would be nice. So let's do that. So, finally home, which is nice. We've just, uh, we're just handing over actually to the people who are going on to my uh, rotation next and just making sure that they had everything under control. They knew what was coming, what to do, what not to do, where to go and how the sort of week runs. So yeah, they were pretty happy with that. Got a good handover and yeah. We'll start a new role next week, which would be nice. So, sorting out the big meeting and essentially just having a whole lot of time to like operate, which is gonna be super fun. And yeah, I mean, I actually, we, we accidentally got our pager home with us and I, when I was on the call um, with, the, with my other, other people, on the rotation who I was handing over to, I looked at the pager after I parked the car and it just said, met call. <laughs> and I was gonna be treating that team. So luckily I handed over in time and hopefully the guy I handed over to is managing that met call okay. Whew, I'm unfit. Walking upstairs, talking. Anyways, that's the cover shift. See you next time. Bye.